When we think about apex predators, our minds often go straight to fearsome creatures like lions or wolves. But if we look back into prehistory, our ancestors were arguably the most formidable hunters of all. Prehistoric humans were far deadlier than any modern human, armed with raw strength, sharp intelligence, and a massive drive for survival. Learning about these early humans might leave you wondering how we evolved into a species so focused on aesthetics and social media. Scientists today recognize around 15 to 20 different species of early humans. However, there's no agreement on how these species are related or which ones went extinct without leaving any descendants. Most early human species did not survive to the present day. There's also ongoing debate among scientists about how to properly identify and classify these species and what factors influence their evolution and eventual extinction. Early humans began their epic journey out of Africa into Asia between 2 million and 1.8 million years ago. They made their way into Europe a bit later, around 1.5 million to 1 million years ago. Modern human species, however, spread to various parts of the globe much more recently. For example, people arrived in Australia roughly 60,000 years ago and reached the Americas about 30,000 years ago. The advent of agriculture and the rise of civilizations are even more recent, dating back only around 12,000 years. Prehistoric humans were like the first survival machines built for a harsh world. Their physical strength and endurance were off the charts for chasing down prey and enduring long hunts. Compared to modern people, they had sturdier bones and stronger muscles. Take Neanderthals, for instance. They had a stocky build and powerful limbs, making them perfect for close quarter combat and heavy lifting. Neanderthals, along with their Asian counterparts known as Denisovans, are our closest ancient human relatives. Evidence from fossils and DNA suggests that Neanderthals and modern humans split from a common ancestor at least 500,000 years ago, possibly as far back as 650,000 years ago. Neanderthals had a long, low skull with a prominent brow ridge and a face that protruded forward, featuring a big, wide nose. Some scientists believe this large nose was an adaptation to cold, dry environments, helping to warm and moisten the air they breathed. Their large front teeth were often used like a third hand for preparing food and other materials. And unlike us, Neanderthals didn't have much of a chin. Their short, stocky physiques were well suited to cold climates. With a bulky trunk and short limbs, to conserve heat. This body structure also gave them greater power in their arms and legs for close-range hunting ambushes. Despite their caveman reputation, Neanderthals were intelligent and capable humans. It's almost a bit unfair that Neanderthal is used as an insult today. However, even with all these fascinating traits, Neanderthals might not be as intriguing as Homo erectus, the first known hominin to migrate out of Africa and possibly the first to cook food. In terms of species survival, Homo erectus is a massive success story, with fossil evidence spanning more than 1.5 million years, making them the longest surviving of all our human relatives. When we compare this to our own species, Homo sapiens, which has been around for maybe 400,000 years, we start to really appreciate how impressive Homo erectus was at surviving through all sorts of environmental and climate changes. Homo erectus were the original world explorers, the most geographically widespread species apart from us. They first appeared in Africa about two million years ago, evolving from a late form of Australopith or one of the more primitive Homo species. Then they spread their wings metaphorically, of course, and ventured into various parts of Asia. Early Homo erectus had smaller, 
more primitive teeth, a smaller overall size, and thinner, less robust skulls compared to their later versions. They had large faces compared to modern humans, long and low skulls, and no chin, basically the J. Leno of prehistoric times. And let's not forget to mention their famous brow ridge, which was like having a built-in visor. Now, let's talk about their weapons and tools. Imagine a prehistoric warehouse filled with spears, axes, and knives made from stone, bone, and wood. These tools were designed to kill swiftly and efficiently. Over time, their toolmaking skills evolved, and by half a million years ago, major Homo erectus sites were littered with tens of thousands of stone tools. They used sophisticated hunting strategies, ambushes, and traps, and coordinated group efforts to take down large games. Unlike today's hunters, who might sit in a tree stand waiting for a deer, these guys often engaged in close-range combat with dangerous animals, showcasing their bravery and skill. These guys could take on a mammoth with nothing but teamwork and stone tools. While Homo erectus might have had their tools and robust bodies to help them out, we still have to give credit to the underdog of prehistoric times, Australopithecus. Living alongside them were predators, 10 times as terrifying as anything we have today. Imagine hyenas the size of bears and saber-toothed cats prowling around. Australopithecus afarensis didn't have tools or big teeth. They were only about three feet tall. Australopiths were the little guys of the prehistoric world, using their brains, agility, and social skills to survive. They were bipedal and had large chewing teeth with thick enamel, but their brains were only slightly bigger than those of great apes. Australopiths are our closest known relatives, and we most likely evolved from a species within this group. They might have looked like they were straight out of a Flintstones episode, but they played a huge role in our evolutionary story. Raymond Dart originally identified Australopithecus in 1925 based on a small child's skull found in Tong, South Africa, dating back two to three million years. This little fossil had an ape-sized brain, but a short face with smaller front teeth, including a small, human-like canine tooth that was way smaller than those of apes. Its back teeth were larger than those of apes, too, Perhaps the coolest part was that the spot where the spinal cord exited the skull was positioned underneath it, showing that these creatures stood fully upright with their heads positioned over their vertebral columns. The oldest and most primitive Australopiths are mainly found in Eastern Africa, especially in Ethiopia and Kenya, while more advanced ones popped up later in South Africa. These Australopiths were fully upright bipeds, built for walking on the ground rather than swinging from trees like other primates. They lost features that would have made them good tree climbers, like a grasping foot. Now, over the past two million years, there's been a noticeable trend in our family tree. While many species were on the path to bigger brains, our own took a different route. Today, our brains are actually the smallest they've been in the last 100,000 years, shrinking by about 100, 150 cubic centimeters since our species first appeared. Flashback to 2013, when something truly remarkable happened deep within a South African cave. A remarkable stash of fossils was discovered, unveiling an entirely new human species, Homo nalidi. Homo nalidi basically shattered the idea that human evolution was a neat, linear progression from ape-like ancestors to us. But that's not even the most interesting part of this discovery. How did these fossils end up in those caves? What tools did they use? And how did they manage to survive alongside species with much larger brains? A group of cavers stumbled upon a hidden chamber deep within the rising star cave system. Inside, 
they found over 1,500 fossil bones belonging to at least 15 Homo naledi individuals, ranging from infants to adults. This Homo naledi presents a fascinating blend of traits. While some aspects resemble modern humans and Neanderthals, others are similar to that of our more ancient relatives like the Australopithecines and Homo habilis. And, get this, despite its small brain, Homo naledi might have had a lifestyle and diet similar to other hunter-gatherers in Africa at the time. Now, the million-dollar question, how did Homo naledi manage to stick around? Maybe they found their own little corner of the world where they could thrive, away from the competition. Or perhaps they had some clever tricks up their sleeve, like spending more time hanging out in trees, away from the big-brained crowd. Well, the truth is, Homo naledi defied the expectation that a bigger brain equals automatic success, and their unique blend of features broadens our understanding of human variation in ways we never imagined. Despite their modest brain size, these Homo naledi were no strangers to travel, with a stride and gait resembling our own, they could cover impressive distances. However, they were more at ease in the treetops than walking the pavement. Think less marathon runners and more skilled tree climbers. However, despite lacking any fancy stone tools or material culture, these individuals had really amazing skills. They were nimble enough to craft and handle tools hinting that they might have played a role in early stone industries. Some researchers speculate that these individuals might have been accorded some form of funeral rites with their remains carefully placed in the chamber. We might not know for sure, but we can certainly tell you that the secret to the success of prehistoric humans wasn't just about individual talent, but about teamwork. They lived in tight-knit groups where teamwork and social bonds were the name of the game. They developed complex communication methods, including early forms of language and signals, to coordinate their hunts. This teamwork allowed them to take down prey much larger and more powerful than themselves. But prehistoric humans weren't just good at hunting. They practically had the power to change the environment. They drove some species to extinction through overhunting, and their tool making and fire starting skills gave them a leg up over other predators. The extinction of mega sized animals in many parts of the world lined up with the arrival of these skilled hunters, proving they were a force to be reckoned with in the ecosystem. In fact, one theory about carnivore extinction in East Africa suggests that these animals were competing with our ancestors for food. Can you imagine going head-to-head -head with a saber-toothed cat over a fresh kill? Well, prehistoric humans did that. Picture Africa around three million years ago as a neighborhood with a variety of characters roaming around, including this giant bear otter, among others. But then, about two million years ago, things started to change. The big carnivores, including the bear otter, began to disappear, leaving behind a quieter, less diverse scene. Now Lars Verdelin, a curator at the Swedish Museum of Natural History, has this fascinating theory. He suggests that our early human ancestors might have had something to do with this carnivore vanishing act. Verdelin thinks that, as our ancestors, started getting handy with tools and changing up their diet. They somehow pushed these carnivores out of their habitats. It's like when you move into a new apartment and suddenly realize your neighbors, who were once everywhere, have started to vanish because you've taken over their favorite hangout spots and their food. Scientists have been digging through fossils across Africa and findings paint a vivid picture. Around three million years ago, 
Africa was filled with about 19 different large carnivores moving around. Fast forward a bit, and by 2 million years ago, they had shrunk to 15. Now, while some people blame changes in the neighborhood's landscape and atmospheric changes for these disappearances, other scientists are not buying it. They point out that while the big carnivores were getting scarce, the smaller predators were having a field day, suggesting something else was at play. However, there's something even more interesting about this narrative. It wasn't solely the carnivores feeling the pressure. Even the herbivorous giants, such as the woolly mammoth, face decline. Scientists propose this forms part of a broader narrative, a long line of extinctions that began well before the end of the Ice Age. Thus, while our ancient ancestors might not have directly engaged in combat with bears, their mere existence appears to have caused a significant ecological shift, causing several events that would leave a mark on the world's ecosystem for generations. But what about today? Are modern humans making an even greater impact on the ecosystem than our ancestors did? Share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content like this.